All right, so we can do a lot with the base Python, but one of the real strengths of Python is because of how many people use it and how many people find it advantageous over other programming languages, there's a ton of libraries that people have built up and these can add to its base capabilities. So a library is just a set of modules and a module, so, here we got library we got module and a module is just a file that has some stuff in it so it may have variables it may have functions it may have classes so within a module we've got whatever of these then a library can be a group of modules that are sort of put together because they are either used together, you use multiple ones sort of with each other at the same time, or because they're used in similar situations. So like I said, library is a group of modules. And this is something that Python makes it pretty easy to work with. So you can use tools like pip, you can use virtual environments, and things like Anaconda. And these are all tools to get you easy access to the Python libraries. So Python has a bunch of fantastic libraries, particularly for somebody who's going to be doing work in physics or engineering, anything like that. And some of the main ones I use are NumPy. And NumPy is short for numerical Python. And this is used for matrix math, differentiation, interpolation, all that sort of stuff. A, another library that's great is matplotlib, and this is for plotting, as you might guess, right in the middle there is plot. And you can do all sorts of 2D plots. You can also work a little bit with images. Then there's simi, and this is symbolic math. So things like creating equations, differentiation, integration, and more. Then you got pandas. This is for data analysis. It's got some plotting, some algorithms built in. And if you're interested in data analysis, I recommend you looking a little bit more into pandas. You can see specifically what it's got. Then scipy for more numerical methods. This is basically built on top of NumPy, so just creates additional tools that you can use there. Then you got Cython, which is C with Python, and basically allows you to do some C stuff directly in Python code, makes it uh, easy to do certain things more efficiently, quicker in the code, while still being able to work directly within Python for easier setup with formatting and if you're using other Python stuff with your C stuff that you're making. So these are some of the main ones, but there are tons. And you can, if you're on Windows, then you can press the Windows and R keys, then type in PowerShell, enter. This will pull up the PowerShell. Then if uh, you installed pip, when you installed Python, then you can type pip install just like this. So if I did pip install, this isn't a PowerShell, but it'll be the same thing pip install. And then if you wanted to install numpy, you type numpy. Uh, I've already got installed, so it says requirement already satisfied. That's great. Now, let's look at an example module that I've created to edit images. So this is using 
the existing library pill, which is for image editing. And I can look in here at this. So it's my file create series of pics. So I created this module and the first thing we really care about is import OS. This is a library to get some access to the operating system. So for example, I use it right here. Curder, short for current directory, is os.get and this is current working directory. And this is where I am presently when I'm running the program. So that's an example where you might use a library and what it would be used for. And then next, of course, I've got, like I mentioned, pill. Pill is to edit images. So in order to look at an image file, I'm using pill and I'm using image in pill a lot. So I do from pill import image to use it directly. Then when you're using numpy, basically always you'll do import numpy as np. And then I'm using zeros a bit. So from numpy, I'll import zeros directly. And then I'll import math. And because I'm using these, I'll use from math import each of these directly. So then I define a couple of functions I've got that I'm going to be using later. So for example, to measure the distance between two points, to get the angle from point one to point two, so on to change a string of colors to the corresponding list with an RGB value, things like that. And then the next main thing is I create my own image. And this is a class called image and it just allows me to create and edit my own images. So I've got a lot of methods in here, but if I scroll down here is where I actually call it up. And a common thing to do in Python is to have the main functions. And so I've got DEF. So to bind my function underscore underscore main underscore underscore with no inputs. And this just allows me to have it so that I can run this section of code just by calling up main. So this isn't really a function I would want to use repeatedly, but it allows me to like section up the code. I may want to run this the first time I run this file and then this next time. So instead of commenting this out when I want to run a different section, I can instead have this be in a function and this being a separate function. And then I run one, then the other. And the one that I'll look at right now that uses my class that I made is main two. So I'll check. Yep. And I've got main two as the only uncommented one. So I won't run any of these other mains. And I'll go back up. And what is this going to do? It's going to create an image. And because of the way my image class is defined, it expects an input of the size and the color. So I give it, say I want it gray, size 500 by 500. And then I want it to draw a line, draw some rays, which are just lines starting at a certain point at some angle and distance, and then draw a circle, draw an arc, and save that. So pretty basic little image editing. And if I clear this and I actually run this file, and it's the create series of pics, I created it right here. So let's go ahead and look in my folder here. Right now I've got four images and I'll just delete these real quick. And then I will run this one more time. So you can see I run it and it creates that image right here. So if I show the image right here is the image I created. So we've got two images in this folder. The second one I'll use later, but this one is just a image and it's got all the lines and circle and arc and everything that I drew. And we can see if I changed this one to red, then that will make my background red. You can't quite see it. I changed this to red right over here. And then I can run this again, scoot this over. And when I run this, now it makes the background red, right? And I could change 
bunch of other stuff, but this is basically, you can see what, what my module does. It's just a easy way to generate images. So yeah, kind of interesting. And I have this other image in this folder, and this is an image I'll actually edit in my program. So if I hide these again and go to main five, got a comment out here of what I used to be running with this code. But now what I'm currently running is I've got the location of that image, or sorry, it's actually main six I'll want to run. So I get that image and then I basically just say, I want to convert it to black and white. And if it's a certain brightness is what this is looking at. If it's a certain brightness, then make it zero, red, green, and blue. So just make it black. And if it's less than that, then make it white. So sort of inverts the image, but it lets me control if I wanted whatever color here. So that if it's a certain brightness, then it makes it orange and so I could do whatever I want. But let's just say I want it black and white like that. Then let's come in out this and now just run main six. So let's run that. And it'll take a second because it's a bit bigger image and I'm editing it differently. So let's go ahead and show these again. And now you can see I have another image in here. And if I flip back and forth between the two, you can basically see it kind of inverted the image, right? Because it made, if it's a certain brightness, it's black instead of maybe you'd expect white. And you can see when I flip back between the two that it's working. So that's that. And I could change the parameters in my program and shift this up a little bit so I could make it so that it doesn't have to be quite as bright to be black. So it'll turn black at a little bit lower number here. So by two, let's hit 4.6. Run this again. Show these. And now you can see it changed quite a bit, but it's still doing the same sort of thing. It's just saying it needs a much lower brightness to actually reach the threshold that it's black. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. And I'm going to have in the comments a list of things that you may want to look into with Python. So got stuff like 3D modeling. Automation. You could edit images. You can make GUIs or graphical user interfaces, just the programs that have some buttons and things on them, like a browser or whatever program you're working with. Uh, you can do data analysis, lots of stuff like that. And I'll have links to things you can look into, and then you can kind of pick something that you find interesting and roll with it, keep going. And that I find is the best way to learn a program language over time. So. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned a lot.